Howdy folks, welcome to part 5.4 of my comprehensive guide to PFSense 2.3. In this video, I want to talk about NTP, or the Network Time Protocol. Now, this isn't terribly uh, important as far as the grand scheme of things and uh, your PFSense install goes, so you don't necessarily need to watch this video uh, or understand this. Um, you'll be just fine without it. However, NTP is quite interesting, uh, and I'm going to be doing some, uh, some interesting experiments uh, with NTP in a few future video uh, to do with PFSense. And uh, uh, it won't be part of this video series, but it will be on this channel, so uh, this is sort of just a, a precursor to that. So of course I want to make sure that I cover it in enough detail that people know what it is, that by the time that video comes out, um, people are not uh, kind of wondering where it came from. So uh, NTP is, uh, like I said, it's the network time protocol. It's a sort of a very old um, protocol which allows uh, basically nodes on a network to get the current date and time. So you've probably never had to set the clock on a computer, a laptop, uh, or your phone. I mean, you may have had to set the time zone or maybe daylight savings time, but you've never actually had to set the time and date. It's because it's automatically done for you, and what's doing it is NTP. NTP uh, works in basically sort of a, a tree-like structure. Uh, now, in computing, trees are drawn upside down, so the root is at the top and uh, leaves are at the bottom. And uh, the idea behind NTP is that you have a small number of machines, uh, nodes, that actually know what the time is. They have a highly accurate atomic clock on board. And these machines are basically the time. Um, they are the official reference. And these devices are known as stratum zero time servers. Now, there are devices that are connected over a network to these uh, stratum zero time servers. And these devices are then called stratum one um, nodes or time servers. And these are, um, there are inherently more of them than there are stratum zero devices, of course, because they don't have to have a special clock on them. They just need a standard crystal oscillator, which is not terribly accurate. And uh, they can connect to the um, stratum zero devices and they can effectively download the time. And they're inherently less accurate than stratum zero devices because the time has to pass through a network link. And network links are generally quite terrible uh, as far as uh, accuracy uh, goes because network links have uh, effectively almost random um, latencies. So if you attempt to ping a node, whether it be on your local network or over the internet, every packet in that ping is going to have a different latency. It's going to have a different round trip time. So NTP has algorithms which are designed to attempt to correct for that, uh, those random delays. And uh, it allows you to get a relatively accurate time for what it is. Um, and of course, you've got stratum zero devices, stratum one devices connected to that. And of course, you can have more devices uh, below that, so devices connected to the stratum one time servers, which are called stratum two time servers. And then of course, you can have another layer, stratum three devices connected to that, and so on and so forth. And it can fit, continues down to, I believe, stratum 16 is the furthest that you can be from an actual time server. And by the time you're, you're down there, your time is really not that accurate at all. But with, uh, with the NTP pool project, um, you can get, uh, you can basically be a stratum two time server. It's not difficult to do that. Uh, and what I'm talking about is the NTP pool project. And this is what allow, allow you to be a stratum two or a stratum three um, time server. If, if you ignore PFSense completely, your computer right now, if it's configured properly, should be a stratum two or a stratum three device, which is pretty good. Um, and for most people, um, that's perfectly fine. If you're, you know, a quarter, uh, you know, or half a second off, no one really cares. But uh, this video is kind of for people who care a little bit more than that. Um, one thing that happens inherently is NTP is both a client and a server. Um, so any computer which has an NTP service on it, um, including PFSense, um, will 
inherently both be a client connected to some time server getting the time from that, but it will also be a server such that other people can connect, can connect to you and you can serve out um, that time to the other machine. So if you're a Stratum 2 uh, time server, then other people can connect to you and be Stratum 3 time servers in themselves. So that it's, all, it's this big web, basically, that's built. Uh, but it's sort of it's sort of a more of a tree than a web because it, it all starts somewhere, and that is the Stratum Zero um, highly accurate atomic clock devices. So PFSense has a built-in NTP server, and you can use this um, if you want uh, to actually get sort of more accurate time in your um, in your network. So right now, probably all of your devices are connecting out into the internet um, and connecting to whatever time server they're by default connected to. Um, so for Windows, I know Microsoft runs their own NTP servers. I think it's at time.windows.com. Um, if you're running Ubuntu, Ubuntu has, uh, you know, they've set up uh, with the NTP pool. Um, PFSense um, uses the NTP pool as well and uh, all that kind of stuff. But they're all getting their, the time on their own. What you can do is you can actually have them all go through your PFSense router. Now, what this will do is this will bump down their stratum by one. So if there are currently stratum two devices, then they're gonna be bumped to a stratum three because they're gonna be going through your router, which is gonna be adding an extra layer, um, an extra hop from the actual, uh, the actual time source. So the absolute accuracy may go down, but what will improve is the time synchronicity between all the devices on your network because they're all using your local network to get the time from one time server. They're all going to be um, generally more in sync with each other, which in my situation is actually more desirable. I care more that all of my servers have the, the same time with reference to themselves than they do with actual time referenced to you know what the actual time is now. That's what I care more about. So that's, the, that's why I've set up my network where all the devices on my network use my PF sense box as the time reference. And the reason why you can get better synchronicity is because you're, you're doing it over your local network. And your local network has far less traffic and far less uh, unpredictabilities than the internet does. So um, the algorithms in NTP can do a much better job at adjusting the time. So that's why you can uh, you can get a much you can get much better synchronicity um, by setting all of your devices um, to use your PFSense box. And it's very easy to do. Uh, if you have a Linux system, um, just Google it. There's an there's a, an NTP configuration file. Um, if you're on Windows, you can go to uh, the the clock. Uh, I believe actually, I believe actually, if I go here, change time and date settings, internet time, change settings, see it's currently synchronized with time.windows.com, and I can actually uh, sync this with uh, pfsense.local uh, domain. Um, you need a fully qualified domain name, and uh, you can actually um, set up Windows. Uh, to synchronize with your, your PFSense box. Um, it may not work because this is uh, not a um, not a fully qualified domain name, so it may actually uh, not work because Windows is not configured properly, but you can do it. Um, I, I do do it on my network, so uh, you may need an FQDN for that. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'll put in the video description if I can uh, find out uh, exactly what the requirements on Windows are. But anyway, in PFSense, uh, under services, there is NTP, and you can uh, configure the NTP server uh, slightly. Um, you can set up which interfaces you want it to listen on. Generally, uh, that's all the interfaces by default, but if you want to exclude it from one for some reason, you can, uh, you can do that here. Um, by default, it will uh, go to uh, one server from the NTP pool. Um, however, adding more time servers uh, is better because you can it, basically NTP will use the multiple servers that you have to sort of correct for variations in each other, and uh, you can res that will result in a more accurate time. So what you can do is if you go to the uh, the pool.ntp.org project, um, you can actually see the way that they uh, the way that they do servers. So I can actually add um, more time servers to my PFSense box by just hitting add and adding more more time servers, and that will inherently improve uh, improve the time accuracy. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can enable NTP uh, graphs. You can enable RRD graphs 
for the NTP service, which is dis disabled by default, but I've, uh, I've actually checked it. Uh, because what's really nice uh, about this is, I mean, I like graphs, I like logging, uh, more data the better, and because these are RRD graphs, they don't use up a lot of memory, it's probably less than a megabyte, and uh, what they do is they actually allow you to see the drift and the wander and the jitter uh, of your system clock uh, with reference to the NTP uh, time servers. So uh, you can actually see and watch NTP correct your clock um, and in, in a graph form. Um, and this is kind of interesting to watch because most manufacturers of motherboards generally put a really bad crystal or a really low quality uh, clock crystal uh, in the motherboard because they know that the operating system is probably going to be running NTP and as a result um, they don't have to put a really good high accuracy crystal in it because they know that NTP is just going to be correcting it all the time anyway. So you can kind of, uh, I mean, most most motherboards are actually really terrible. Um, they're some of the worst um, time sources I think I've ever seen. Um, I used to have servers that didn't run NTP. Um, uh, Ubuntu actually by default doesn't have NTP uh, enabled. Uh, it only turns on once when at boot up and it doesn't run ever again. So of course servers, they boot up once, they stay on for a long time. Um, I actually had two servers. One of them was fast, one of them was slow. And over the course of six months, they drifted several minutes apart. And they had to do, um, they actually had, uh, one was a database, one, one was running applications. And they were actually uh, communicating with each other and um, it was causing all sorts of problems because the timestamps were messed up. So um, after I enabled, I installed NTP and I set them up to use my PFSense box and now they're pretty much perfectly in sync now. So um, yeah, it's kind of interesting to see. And of course the clock on the, the router is not great either. So you can just see it uh, um, getting corrected in the graphs, which is kind of cool. You can set up logging and other stuff like that, but generally speaking, um, that just kind of gets spammy and I don't really bother to do that. And you can actually go to um, the NTP uh, status page, and you can see um, what's currently going on here. So this is the, the output um, from an NTP command, just sort of in a nice um, web page style table here. And uh, you can see right here, we have uh, our current active time server is a Stratum 1 time server. Um, and uh, you can actually look online as to what these mean, um, pole and reach, and it tells you actually what these mean, um, the delay, offset, jitter. Um, I'm not going to go into defining these because I'm sure I'm going to get it wrong, um, uh, but Wikipedia explains what these are, I'm sure, I'm sure of it. But th this will show you all the time servers that you're currently connected to. So one of the other things that you can do with PFSense, which is what I'm going to be doing um, in a future video, is actually uh, creating my own Stratum Zero time server. Now, I don't own an atomic clock, but what I do own is a GPS. And GPS, for those of you that don't know, GPS is uh, effectively just a bunch of satellites with really accurate atomic clocks on board. That's all GPS is, it's just time. Um, the idea is that you have uh, GPS uh, satellites that are overhead, they're all broadcasting their time. That's all they do. All, all, all GPS servers really, really, or uh, GPS satellites do is they just broadcast the current time. Uh, and of course, due to the speed of light, time is different um, coming in from each satellite because the satellites are different distances to you. And your GPS module has a really accurate clock that's synchronized, it's, it's locked in with the time from these satellites, and it can then calculate the drift, the difference in, 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 in time between the different GPS satellites, and it can triangulate your position. I think you need four servers, or uh, four satellites, to uh, determine your exact position on Earth. Three of them for uh, the, the uh, location, and then one of them for the altitude. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna be connecting uh, a GPS to my PFSense box, and I'm going to be using a special output on that GPS, which I'm gonna be wiring into my motherboard, um, that creates a very accurate pulse per second output that my NTP server can synchronize to, and I can actually uh, basically get um, a stratum zero output from it, uh, as, a, as basically as close to that as I'm going to get. And uh, you can get 
like nanosecond, uh, microsecond to nanosecond accuracy with a GPS module um, these days. And uh, the whole cost for all the hardware I'm going to be installing is going to be uh, it's under $25 Canadian. So um, I haven't done this yet, so hopefully it works. Um, but uh, that's going to be a, a video in its, in its own right. Um, so that's going to be kind of cool, where I'm going to be setting up a GPS time, um, and I'm going to actually have my own Stratum Zero time server, and all of the uh, devices on my network are going to be Stratum One. So, um, of course, this doesn't really mean that much in the grand scheme of things, but, um, you know, there's some geek cred associated with this. So um, that's that's what, what I'm going to be doing uh, in the future. So... Um, NTP, definitely something you probably want to set up. Um, just, you know, maybe add some other time servers, whatever, and then configure your, um, your, uh, your clocks in your, uh, in your uh, network to actually synchronize with that. And I believe you really do need a, uh, a, a fully qualified domain name for this to work. Oh, no, there we go. The clock was successfully synchronized. Okay, so you don't need a fully qualified domain name. So there you go. So now my Windows install is can, is synced with my um, PFSense box. So that's that's really all there is to it. So I'll go into uh, more detail in uh, a future video uh, about serial GPS. So uh, until then, thanks for watching.